So next up, let's talk about additive. And we're going to talk about additive and over together because they kind of go hand in hand with each other. When I say additive, I'm not talking about math. I'm talking more about the approach and how you put things together inside a composite. Because there's so many different ways to do it, I really like I like the additive approach because, again, it's easier to keep things in modules. It also creates smaller objects that we're dealing with. So in terms of a bounding box and rendering and compute, it reduces our total overhead. Next up is over. Over is creating things that sit on top or in some cases under, but for the most part, you know, each individual module is sitting on top of something else. And I'm going to go through a couple of different comps here and show some examples of those. So first up, we have a, this is, these two comps are exactly the same. And what we're doing in these comps is we're starting with our main plate. We're going to add some mountains here. We're going to do a little sky replacement there. We're also going to change, add some signs here. And I'm going to kind of walk through these and show you the example of how organizing a script and how working with some different ideas really can change how the scripts come together and the speed at which you can work in them. So in this case, we have our mountains and we're stealing this section of mountains for the right hand side. And then I think we're stealing the sky over here for the left hand side. So, and I see a lot of scripts built like this. So this is why I wanted to illustrate this method, which I like to call the Christmas tree method, because the, when you get into really big flows, they start to just bell out at the bottom and they look like a Christmas tree. And a lot of people would think, okay, so we want to put this mountain underneath our sign and underneath our outhouse. So we're going to just punch a hole in our plate and then put it underneath, you know, basically use stack order to do that for us. So this is how you would do that. So we have our shape, we created this, you know, we, then we have to take our other foreground shapes and stencil those out of our background shape, which is our mountain, so that we're putting the mountain into the right place. And then we're merging that over. And a lot of times I see people just merge this over, they get their inputs backwards, they should be using an under. But again, most people don't use the operations the way they're meant to be used. And so we have our mountain underneath now. And as you can see that, and we'll go over this plate in a second. So then we keep going. So same thing. Now we want to do the sky replacement. So now we punch out for the sky and then we add the sky underneath. And now we have our signs that we want to add. So you can see each of those gets added in. Now, a couple, you know, big issues with this is the first one being we have a lot of repetitive tools because each section of the comp is being added in separately, we now have duplicate tools. In this case, we actually have four grain nodes now. The other thing is it's all serial. So each process is happening one after the other. So our signs here, we can't do any processing on those until all the processing upstream has happened. And one of the things, especially with new high-end desktop chips, where you have, you know, 1632, 64 cores that thread up to 128. Being able to create as much parallelization in our comp as possible really helps the compute. It helps leverage as much of the computer as we can. So let's walk through this other one. So now, same thing. We start out with our plate, and then we have our mountain plate. So now we're taking our mountain plate, and now we're punching out the pieces that we need. So we're going to take the mountain part that we want to add in, we're going to put it in the appropriate position and we do that by looking at it in the end. Now we're taking our foreground objects that we don't want the mountains covering and we're actually just stenciling those out of our individual piece. So we do the same thing for our other piece, for our sky, stencil out our trees. Now we're actually merging those together. So this is the concept of nesting. Whenever we're working additively, we can start to nest smaller pieces into larger groups and those groups then we can operate on individually. So same thing here, we'll go look at our signs. So we've done a little bit of work on the signs and then we've transformed them into the appropriate place. And as you can see, our bounding box and our format don't line up now. Something to be aware of is this image is much smaller and when we move it into our HD frame, our HD frame actually encompasses about this much space. 
So don't be worried too much when your bounding box jumps off the side. Sometimes you can just use a simple reformat and I'll just throw one in to show you how that works. And you want it set to your format, which is your root format. And you want to set it to none and turn off center. So what this does is this just opens the format up so that it encompasses the bounding box. That way, if you're doing work that you need to see, you can do this to see the work by itself. And this is a pretty regular thing to do when you're working in this modular system. All right, so we now merge our signs together. We've added our reformat so we can actually see them next to each other. We're doing some color correction. We're doing some other blurs and softens. Now we can actually merge all of these down together. So now we have only the things that we're adding to our comp. We'll add our grain and then we'll put those back on top. You know, the real beauty of this is working nested and working grouped. We don't have duplicate tools anymore because we've combined all of our additive things. We can just apply tools we need to, to those as we go. So in this case, we're only using one grain and it's applying to all of our new pieces where when you work in a serial manner, you're applying that grain to every single piece as you merge it into the B chain. The same here. So we have a couple different color corrects. You know, we have individual color corrects. So each sign's getting a little color correction on its own. And then we're globally adjusting the color correct for each of those signs. Same with our soften and defocus. We're not adding a soften and defocus to each of these. We want them to have the same level of soften and defocus because they live in the same plane. Over here, we have to add each of those tools to each image because they live separately from each other. Here we've nested them together with this merge. The other really nice thing about this, if we view the end, it's really easy to select our merge nodes across the bottom and turn them off using the D key to disable. And now we can step through and turn off all these pieces individually. So say we wanna just work this mountain piece and we don't want to see this other stuff say we have something really heavy on this side and we don't want it processing it's really easy to just turn off that whole fork view our final comp and let it run so that's additive and over i hope that it is clear how you can really improve your efficiency both from a creative and compositing standpoint and from a compute and rendering standpoint the other really nice thing about this is it's really easy to just grab whole sections and slide them over, add more, you can grow them. You know, it all stays very organized as you grow your comps and they always grow. You know, when you start to try and manipulate one of these comps, you're having to come in here and grab these and pull them out this way. Everything starts to really get messy and it starts to turn into a spider web. You know, using this methodology, it's, it's a really clean way and a really organized way to build your comps.